Hey, what's up guys? So in this episode of new and updated radar detectors, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, over the past couple months, we've had some new radar detectors be released. Uh, we've had a lot of updates to existing radar detectors. We've had price changes for detectors. We've had old detectors getting discontinued. And it looks like we also have some information about some upcoming detectors that have not yet been released. And so with that said, let's go ahead and dive into everything that we've learned over the past couple months. <laughs> So starting off, the big news as of late, of course, is the introduction of the Uniden R8. It's basically an upgraded version of the Uniden R7 with longer range, better false alert filtering, and a bunch of new features. And overall, I really like the detector, and so much so, in fact, that it's become my new daily driver. Now that said, after launch, we've actually been seeing some issues with the detector, and specifically some display failures. Unofficially polling people on the forums, it looks like there's about a 25% failure rate of the first batch of R8s. And so after that, Uniden has actually been getting a lot of the detectors back. They've been luckily sending out shipping labels to return the detectors and shipping out replacements to people. Additionally, it looks like with some of the return detectors, they've been taking a closer look at them and it looks like they figured out what the issue is. And so the next batch of detectors, whenever they come out, uh, should actually have a fix for this. I don't know when the next batch of detectors is gonna be available, but it looks like they figured out what the issue is. So that's definitely good news. And if you take a look online, it still says that it's sold out everywhere, but hopefully whenever they come back, yeah, they've actually fixed the issue. Now the detector retails for $6.99. Uh, on Amazon, people have been selling it for $50 higher for $7.49, but it does look like they've changed it uh, and they've dropped it back to MSRP at $6.99. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the updates for the Uniden R3 and R7. Now for these detectors, there's been new firmware versions floating around for people who've actually bought new versions of the detectors. Uh, I've done a video talking about this already. That's firmware version 1.59 for the R3 and 1.42 for the R7. Now, I have no idea when Uniden is finally gonna release these firmware updates on their website available for download, so you can pick it up through the update software. Now, for more information about uh, what all is included in these updates, including the new features here added to the R3, uh, or the bug fixes that have been added here to the R7, uh, just click the button on screen or link in the video description and that'll go into additional detail for you. Additionally, I've also been seeing some nice discounts available on the R3, uh, on the R4, and the R7 as well. And so if you've been looking for a good deal, I've been posting them on Facebook and Twitter and over on my website, so you can take a look. But uh, it looks like, yeah, we've actually been getting from time to time uh, some nice sales and discounts on the different unit and detectors. Next, let's talk about uh, an upcoming detector that has not yet officially been announced, but it looks like we do have some initial information about it. Uh, over on the FCC's website, it looks like there's a new Whistler detector that's gonna be coming out. There's no real details that we know about yet, other than maybe just like a picture of the bottom of the detector to show where the label's gonna go. Uh, but it looks like this new detector is gonna be called the Titan XR. Um, again, there's no information yet. They're just sending it out for certification so that they're gonna be able to actually sell it here. Uh, in the US. Uh, once we've got more information and an official announcement or something, of course, I'll be going ahead and uh, sharing that information with you guys. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't done so already. Next, moving on to Escort. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the Escort Redline 360C. This has been pretty much unavailable for months now, um, and it looks like Escort's actually going to be raising the price to the detector from $749 to $799. So a $50 price increase for the Redline 360C. Next up, there's the Escort 9500iX. This is an old detector at this point, uh, and now it's officially finally being discontinued. Now, this isn't the first time that it's been discontinued, but it does sound like this time it's gonna stay discontinued and not be brought back. Escort's posted an announcement about this over on social media, and it looks like uh, they're gonna be wanting to sell the Max 3 as the successor here to the 9500iX. That makes sense. It's definitely a newer detector, better performance, better filtering, more features, et cetera. And it would definitely be the way to go over the now ancient 9500iX. Moving on next to Redenso. So let's start here with the Redenso DS1. Uh, this has had a new firmware update, firmware version 1.09. And this adds some additional K blocking capabilities to filter out some additional cars with blind spot radar. They've made some changes to the GPS lockouts. Uh, it changes the USB power behavior so the detector can be powered off of USB from more cars. Uh, this does affect the way that you're actually gonna be updating the detector as well. There's now kind of a button press that you're gonna be doing. And there's also gonna be a couple bug fixes that have been added in here as well. Uh, for additional details and kind of full information about the change log and all the changes, uh, Links in the video description to the video uh, and the article on the website. Next, we've also got some price increases for both the Redenso XP and the Redenso Pro M. The Redenso XP is now $349, which is an increase of $50. And the Redenso Pro M is now $499, which is also an increase of $50. And I understand that there's issues with inflation and supply chain issues and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but nevertheless, it is unfortunate, I think, to see an increase in the price here of the detectors because it does make them then less competitive. Uh, compared to some of the other options that are available on the market. Next up, let's take a look at the latest firmware update for the Valentine 1 Gen 2. It's firmware version 4.1028. Now, the main change here with this new update is uh, kind of a modified behavior if you double press the mute button uh, on the face of the detector to mute some false alerts and future false alerts. Uh, now, if you double press the mute button, it will no longer mute uh, the new bogey alert tone if you get a new KA band signal after double pressing the mute button. 
basically a small change to safety uh, to make the detector more likely to alert to Ka band signals after you first muted some uh, Ka band falses. Now, the chip shortage has actually kind of required them to change some of the internal parts and components. And so the latest software also helps uh, accommodate some of these small component changes. And they've also made some additional software changes to help for uh, developers uh, with their different app integration. Uh, now, lastly, unfortunately, this update doesn't resolve the issue that was actually introduced with the previous update, 4.1027, where the last update did help improve the performance on Ka band, but it also introduced some additional Ka falsing issues. Uh, and unfortunately, this latest update, we still are seeing the same thing. But nevertheless, that's what we've got here uh, with this latest update. Next, let's move on and take a look at the Stinger radar detector. The first update that they released, version 6.0.30, uh, we've got some improvements to the omnipolarity scanning, uh, improvements for photo radar detection, uh, we've got improved K-band settings, and they've also improved handling for laser updates. Then Stinger released a second update, version 6.0.34, and this is a minor update with some UI changes as well as some under the hood uh, communications improvements. And then finally, a quick look at TMG, the laser jamming system. Uh, now, they used to have two different CPUs, a regular CPU and a VPR CPU. Uh, they've now kind of gone away with both, and they've renamed the VPR CPU as the TMG Plus CPU. And so this is going to be simplifying kind of uh, TMG's lineup moving forward. Additionally, there's also been a software update uh, to kind of add a little bit of additional functionality if you're running the JPV1 app. TMG has also released updated Gen 2 Plus heads, which improved the performance over the original Gen 2s. Plus, they no longer have a removable lens cover, and that lens cover is now rounded instead of flat. And then finally, we also have price increases for the TMG system across the board. And full details for all the changes here with TMG, I'll link to that in the video description as well. And so yeah, with that said, this is just a quick run through as far as all the new detectors that have been announced, uh, updates, discontinued detectors, upcoming stuff, etc. Uh, since the last time that we did a video like this back in February. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are all doing great and I'll see you in the next video.